Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back in with an update on all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the 4th and final week of January, January 25th until the 29th, Monday to Friday. Retail, low print and imports, plus our community spotlight where you show off your Switch games and potentially win a prize. Later in the episode, we're going to find out who the winner is of this month's prize, Dead or School. Let's begin with this week's retail releases. Atelier Riser 2 is releasing physically in North America on January 26th, while Europe has to wait until January 29th. This is a hotly anticipated sequel to one of the low-key best JRPGs available on the Switch. Full of charm and wonder, a nice sense of adventure with really likeable characters. Every JRPG fan should be anticipating this one especially since the original game physically is a bit of a pain to get right now. Now, my review of this one is going live at 2 p.m. UK time tomorrow, so be sure to check that out. Click ours first, we would appreciate that very much. And yeah, I've been playing this for over a week, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. Subscribe and hit that bell notification if you haven't already. And Alolan Jojo, Jonathan Rumor, and God of Resin have chosen Her Royal Thinus as their pick of the week. Re-Zero Starting Life in Another World, The Prophecy of the Throne, is releasing physically in the US this week. I'm not entirely certain, but I think Europe has to wait next week on this one. Anyways, this is a visual novel with adventure mix, and it looks pretty good. It's from Spike Chunsoft, so there's a lot to be hopeful about on this one. Personally, I know nothing about it, but what I do know is that there's a day one edition in the US which includes some pins. I don't think Europe has that, but there is also a collector's edition which includes those pins and a soundtrack CD art book and steam box. What I find kind of funny is that Spike Chunsoft are doing this really niche game by themselves, but got limited run to do Shira and the Wanderer. I really do wonder sometimes. Root Double is a very nice visual novel releasing physically at retail. We reviewed this one when it released digitally a while back, so check that out for more in-depth information. But yeah, it's a pretty good, nice mystery set in a sci-fi future. It actually includes a main story alongside a prequel story, so you're getting a lot of content here. Now, it is worth noting that Strictly Limited have a variation of this one on their partner store. I don't know when that's getting sent out, but yeah, that has a unique cover as well as two collector's editions, one of which is possibly the worst-selling collector's edition of all time. <laughs> They've sold like 6% of their 3,000 allocation, which is a bit of a financial disaster. In fact, doing a bit of calculation of the 6,500 copies available amongst their various editions, they've only sold 685, barely over 10%. Anyways, Ganicus and Alexander Kato have chosen this as their pick of the week. Turrican Flashback. Uh, this contains four titles in the Turrican series. One, two, Super and Mega. What really properly stinks about this for me, and a real trend with Strictly Limited and their sister company in in games, uh, which I'm starting to not become a fan of, is the practice of having more games in the expensive low print edition while the retail release gets slim pickings. There's no need aside from making the low print edition look far more scarce than it needs to be. They've done it with Space Invaders, they're doing it with Turrican. Stop it guys. If you want to make Strictly Limited more appealing, do it in other ways. Don't gimp out on the retail version just for the sake of it. You know, these are Turrican games. They, they cost you nothing to license. You know, they just want two pieces of the money pie from low print collectors and retail. And honestly, the amount that they try to milk the Turrican release on the Strictly Limited website leaves an extra sour taste. I swear, if this year we see like a, I don't know, like a bubble bubble collection from Strictly Limited where there's a retail version with less games on it, I ain't buying from them again. Pang Adventures is scheduled to release on January 29th. Amazon UK says February for this one, but last week the publisher sent an email out confirming the release is this week. Anyways, this is an old school revival of an arcade classic, so I'm told I'd never heard of it until it released digitally a couple of years back. Anyways, you're just a kid smashing balls. <laughs> this is upgraded with more content and more abilities, and despite the cheap looking art style, it's supposedly pretty good. This Buster Edition, I think is a European exclusive, is pretty cheap, only like $30 on PlayAsia, and includes a reversible sleeve, retro guide, and sticker set. If you're in North America, I'll pop a link below if you guys want to import and get a small discount with our code. All right, low prints. Super Rare have announced their first game of 2021, and you know what? I may not get super excited about most of their releases, but I think this week is their best yet. Maybe. Project Warlock is a great game, a first-person shooter in a Doom style. Really smooth gameplay, satisfying action. This is a great addition to anyone's Switch collection, I am sure. If you want to pick this up from Super Rare, then you'll need to be there on January 28th. Don't be late. Only 4,000 units, which... Come on, guys. You gave Monster Prom, like, maybe the worst game you've ever done, like, 7,000 units. Warlock deserves more than that. At least, at least the same. Not 4,000. 
kind of insulting to the quality here. Anyways, Boombox, our executive producer, has chosen this as their pick of the week. All right, let's delve into a massive, ultra insane section of imports this week. Just remember, if any take your fancy, of, and they definitely will, and you'd like to import them for yourself, then there are import links below in the description and pinned comment. If you use those links, it helps support this little series massively ever so much. You have no idea. You guys are amazing, and you help this series keep going. So thank you for using our links. Plus, in return, if you use our links, you can get a very nice 5% off your order if you use the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out. That's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out for 5% off your order. Citizens Unite Earth Cross Space is a double pack of JRPG style games. I'm going to be putting out a review for this nice little bundle on Wednesday and I highly recommend you check that out. But basically two JRPGs, one goes for the Earthbound style while another the Mario RPGs and they're funny, charming, have a wealth of content and are highly worth it. Only Asia and Japan have physical releases so far. No word on a Western one, but I guess it could happen in the future. Who knows? But, you know, there's no need to wait since both the Japanese and Asian releases have English on the cartridge. I think this is going to be a great little import. And this is Santa Tartaruga's pick of the week. Martian Forest, or known with its subtitle, Martian Forest, Milne and the Forest Gift is a cutesy JRPG. This is an import exclusive with English on the cartridge for both Asian and Japanese releases. Uh, I believe it was once a mobile game, kind of like how Witch Spring 3 was, and this is from the same publisher, so I'm really excited about this one, and I hope to have a review out for you sometime this week, if you can somehow defy the laws of time and space and find 40 hours in a day instead of 24. Anyways, there's a standard release and a nice collector's edition, which includes uh, a little statue of the main character Milne. As weird as it sounds, this is one of my more highly anticipated import exclusives. It looks super cute and seems right up my alley these days. I don't need AAA, just give me, you know, a charming, interesting story with JRPG battles. Ghost Runner is an import exclusive with English on the cartridge. This is a badass looking game, although probably plays not quite as good as, you know, one would hope, but you know, it's badass nonetheless. Both the Asian and Japanese releases have English on the cartridge for this first person hack and slash adventure game. I'm super tempted mainly because the box art is just incredibly badass. It's sublime. Honestly, can't get much cooler than that. I don't believe there's been word on a Western release, so this import is the way to go for now. And this is Dane Wilkinson's Pick of the week. There's another double pack in Japan this week since Japan love their value. The Friends of Ringo Ishikawa and the Arrest of the Stone Buddha are two adventure beat em up type games. Uh, they are from the same developer and you can definitely tell uh, they're really kind of unique, taking a dose of inspiration from the River City Ransom games, I would say. They may not entirely gel with every gamer, but to me, they look pretty badass, beating the crap out of people while also, you know, taking a little bit of TLC. I'd definitely pick this up if I saw them around. And this is Brent McLean's Pick of the Week. Gal Gun Returns is an early Japanese release for a remake of the first game in the infamous series. Personally, I'm not sure why they remade a game that's not even that old instead of like, you know, making a new one. But I guess it is what it is. Europe and America are getting this physically on February 12th, but this early Japanese and Asian release does have English. Although, you know, due to postage times, you probably wouldn't get it that much early anyways. Asia and Japan are getting a different kind of collector's edition from the Western one. It's much simpler compared to the extravagant uh, Rice Digital one. This one just comes with a memorial book and album CD. That's more my kind than the kind of uh, ridiculous European collector's edition. Alpaca Ball All-Stars is making its way to Japan this week. This is a weird but supposedly decent sports game with alpacas bashing footballs with their heads. We've already seen this release in Asian regions with English, um, and this one should have English too. A European release is in the works with Bad Land Games, and North American release is a possibility, but I don't think it's been like 100% confirmed. Lost Sphere is getting a much belated physical release in Asia, following on from Oninaki uh, and I Am Setsuna, which also wasn't too long ago. This has English on the cartridge, perhaps even more up to date too, but I don't know for sure. Buddy Mission Bond is a game that I goddamn want. One of the rare occasions when a game from Nintendo themselves isn't making it westwards, at least not that it's known. Firstly, this has the coolest box art ever. Well, maybe. This is a stylish looking visual novel with adventure elements that I want so bad, but sadly it doesn't have English. I'm hoping it does get translated someday. This Gaia 6 is getting its Japanese release this week. This hotly anticipated game sadly does not have English in this early Japanese version. I'll talk more about this one in its Western release later this year. 
Taisho Mebisulin Taisen blah 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 is a visual novel releasing in Japan this week. There's no English on the cartridge. And Umineko When They Cry Saku Nekobako no Mosu no Koyokyo Yokyo Kyo 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 is a visual novel. I don't know for 100% sure, but I highly doubt English is on the cartridge. There's a standard edition as well as a collector's edition. Well, that is a nice, healthy import week, I would say. Right, let's jump into the Let's Get Physical Spotlight. Remember, if you're shown off in the series, then at the end of the month, in fact, end of this week, you'll be winning the chance of winning a physical Switch game this month. It is Dead or School. Now, this week we had a theme. I asked you to send in your top three favorite cover arts and also maybe write something about it. Well, firstly, I'm going to say, sadly, I'm not going to read out your sentences since this week has been absolutely murder in terms of what I've been like up to. So I'm actually just going to go briefly over your pictures. A lot of you sent stuff in, so I hope you don't mind. I just prefer to, you know, survive an extra week. Firstly, me. Uh, I think I'm a little bit predictable here because, you know, you hear me every week. Of course, one of them is the glorious fight crab. Stake this bad boy in the Louvre all day long. Give the designer a knighthood. Secondly is a recent addition, some of you may have guessed, the Asian cover art for Witch Spring 3. It's so elegant and beautiful, very mysterious like the protagonist of the game herself. I love the Celeste, or is it Aquamarine? I don't know the color. I sound about 50 years old saying different color shades, but it is beautiful. I love the color. The last one was so, so difficult. Uh, I changed my mind about three times, but the last one, I settled on Okami. Yes, the absolutely beautiful piece of artwork sneaked in over a few other games, uh, but I love the boldness, the in-your-face colors, and the character designs are just masterful. I actually prefer the standard cover to the reversible one. All right, on to Eula. As I said, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm not going to be, you know, very descriptive. Robin Hatherall chose a couple of Western Psycho releases and the not often seen Nightmare Boy. I believe this is getting a second collector's edition sometime soon. Tommy Mayers also chose Okami, uh, Steen Bock for Ministry of Broadcast and the subtle artwork of 1971. El Spagata chose the beautiful Gorogoa, the Japanese release of Ghost Story from B-Side Games, stunning, and of course, Celeste, very nice. Lars chose some good old first party titles, Mario Kart 8 so happy and colourful, same with Smash, and Age of Calamity is just badass. Jay Frosty and his wife picked their choices, uh, Jay Frosty chose the top line, while his wife the bottom two, plus they both agreed with the flashback collector's edition. Steven Domit's three picks were the top line, while Grandia was a recent pickup sneaked it into the picture, naughty boy. Marcio Quintiniero has a thing for reversible cover art and went for these. Love the Ease 8 one personally. Adam Carasquillo's ultimate favorite is the Mega Man one. I've never seen a Skyrim one before. Is that actually official? Nancy Braga chose the Steenbock of Fire Emblem, as well as Brigandine from Limited Run and Final Fantasy XII. There's definitely a theme here. Shall we say a uh, mm, political fantasy? Does that work? I don't know. John Crodick chose these three. All hail the mighty fight crab along with Sakuna and the Fire Emblem Anniversary Box. Inactive Yeti cheated somewhat by grouping uh, the Odd World Limited Editions together, which form a nice picture. Very nice though, glad to see them together. Renato Farris chose these. I actually had no idea Slaps and Beans had a retail release, apparently exclusive to Germany. See, Strictly Limited and in games, you know, wanting a piece of both the pie. Uh. Lucas Oni, I think, uh, chose these three. I have to admit, Octopath was very, very nearly my third choice, but Okami just won out. Demix chose Octopath along with Sakuna and Xenoblade 2 Limited Edition. James Church chose these with the Limited Run Valhalla, TMS, and River City Girls. JP picked Fight Crab, Shovel Knight, and the Gold Edition of Phoenix Rising, which I agree is pretty nice. Yo Daddy showed the I Am 8-bit versions of Ori, which really are stunning indeed. Raven Knight enjoyed the interior art of these three games. Chewit chose Doom, uh, the European Breath of the Wild, and Thimbleweed Park from Limited Run. Chris Stay chose these three, Zenblade 2, Bubble Bubble 4 with the contrasting modern and classic characters, and Smash. Ganicus chose Arcade Spirits. He really enjoyed that visual novel, the US version of Wallachia and Fairy Tale, a game that's pretty hard to get a hold of now, so I'm told. Elisa chose these three. You don't see Nelka too often around here, but I agree the artwork is pretty nice. Boombox loves his Metroid Vangers and chose these three. Super Rares Dandara, Blasphemous, and the really cool looking Downwell. I just noticed the frog making a run for it. That's, that's pretty cute. Streaming on the Corner chose the lovely Gris, Fire Emblem, and Hotline Miami Collection. Silver House chose the North American Gun Gun Pixies. 
Rage 4, Steambox, and Atelier Riser 1, which is beautiful. Riss chose these three AI Somnium files. There's some really nice artwork that kind of says a lot about the game. I quite like it a lot. Ron chose these three. Gunlord is badass, and it's easy to forget that the Switch got the Unlimited World Red port ages ago. And uh, that's some damn colorful artwork. Dame Fortuna chose these three with some classic covers, including the reversible artwork of Okami, which, you know, I really loved more at first, but then, then her legs started to look kind of way too big to me, so I kind of now prefer the original cover art. Transient Image chose some import classics. Dragon Quest Trilogy shows off the original artwork of the first three games, which look awesome. Kunio Kun looking very dapper there, and Shirin is a badass. Alexander Kato sent in these three. Again, a bit of political fantasy, maybe, with a dose of hipness from World Ends With You. Juan, yes, our very own Juan, chose these three. A couple of B side games, Cat Quest and Golf Story, alongside Rhyme, which is lovely. Zero Flux chose these very disturbing Darkwood, Nightmare Boy, and the incredible Fairy Fencer F with artwork that reminds me of old school Final Fantasy artwork. Champ Dancer, yet another one uh, with Sakuna, so popular. Kunai, the limited run distribution one, and Dragon's Dogma. Executive producer God of Resin chose these incredibly badass Doom, the classic Octopath, and the wedding cake variant of Hollow Knight. I have no idea why I get an image of a wedding cake when I see this one. Tim Ten picked up the hilarious West of Loathing, uh, the disturbing Mother Russia Bleeds, and the classic Fight Crab. Peter Clark likes his value with three double packs, six games for the price of three. Highly recommend all of them. Certified chose some heroic looking cover art with Hollow Knight, Ori 2, and the Binding of Isaac. Art Phoenix Assortis chose the reversible cover for the Japanese collector's edition of Xenoblade 2 alongside Neptunia 7. Yes, I know it's not 7, but I'm stubborn. And also got the badass Gunlord. Kozai Hard chose these popular games, Langressa Collection, Brigandine, and the reversible Okami. Yusha chose these three, including the retro-looking Jump King, which is pretty cool. Park Ranger chose these two very popular titles, and deservedly so, plus one we haven't seen yet, R-Type Dimensions. I have this myself, and I didn't appreciate the artwork until just now having seen this. Goma chose these three, the cool first-person action of Persistence, Boy Terrarium, really loved this edition, plus Blossom Tales, which is really cool. Lord Vapor chose these, Mortar is a popular one alongside Lapis Labyrinth, uh, and Duck Game, which is an interesting imagination of the game. Split Heavens chose these, a couple that we've seen before, plus the Mario Kart 8 Steam Bock, which I had no idea existed. Captain Slow chose these classic RPGs, uh, a collection of mana, uh, it really is a celebration of the franchise. McLaren got in heavy with the Collects Editions, very stylish looking Vasara collection. I didn't actually know Rhyme had a Collects Edition, to be honest. VF chose these three, again Sakuna so popular, uh, the one in the middle is one of the Konosuba games, uh, it's an import, sadly there's no English but I do agree the box art is really fun. Joel Parker chose the Doom Badassery, Paper Mario, and the underrated box art of Inertial Drift, very moody, I like it. Marion tried to teach me how to say Esprit properly, but I'm being stubborn and not learning it, ha. Huh? Summer Pockets, massive shame there's no English as the cover art is beautiful, love the vastness of the sky and the string of butterflies, so beautiful. Shaft Zero chose these three, Okana has a similar vibe to Summer Pockets with the big sky. Marty Mar chose these three including the contrasting light and dark with fury which is brilliant. MDZ, oh man you guys in your Sakuna. I really like the diorama model-like appearance of Link's Awakening. It looks like a toy you could just pick up and play with. And I'm also a fan of the artwork for Ark of Alchemist. Maybe not the game itself, but the artwork is really nice. Griffin chose these, the alternative version of Binding of Isaac, which is kind of terrifying. Transistor is cool, and that Stardew Valley is packed. Beatrice chose these three. Happy to see Ryza and Battle Chef, uh, which is one of my favorite indie games. Wonder Song is just so warm to look at. Switch Guy 42 chose these fine covers. I actually think I do prefer the standard version of Eze, even though I do love the alternative cover. I think I like the, you know, the imagery of the two characters back to back. It really works. Dane Wilkinson's son chose these three. Uh, actually, Dark Siders Genesis is properly cool. Dual wielding guns will never not be cool. And Dane Wilkinson himself went with these three. Celeste is just beautiful. Luchi, or Luki, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it, chose these Liar Princess and the Blind Prince. I think would feature here a lot more if it was, you know, easy to get a hold of. Crit Cat chose these three with the watercolor appearance of Rune Factory 5, which is just so beautiful. Jupa chose these three. 
the Tokyo RPG Factory Trilogy. Retro Zen chose these some interesting choices, they really nailed that Curse of the Moon artwork, very nostalgic. And finally, executive producer Brent McLean chose these three Okami and the collector's edition of Vitamin Connection, which is massive, plus the incredibly colourful Mr. Driller Encore, the import exclusive. And that's about it, guys. I'm exhausted, but it's always enjoyable seeing what you guys pick up and want to show off. Please send me your pictures on Twitter over at so what about Game. You can DM me so I can keep track of it, or you can tag me in a post and use the hashtag Let's Get Physical. I'll also give you a nice little retweet, or you can email it into us at contact us at switchwatch.co.uk. Just remember to start the email title with Community Spotlight. Plus, we have a Discord where you can submit your pictures there in the submission section and have a nice little chat with us at the same time. Discord link is below. Please group all your games together and send me just one picture. I would really appreciate it very much as it helps me out quite a lot. Uh, unless it's an unboxing, of course. And there's only one last thing to do. Dead or school, who's the winner? It is... Jason Woodbury! Jason, please get in touch via the same method you submitted your photo and I'll sort you out with dead or school. Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physical. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumo, Ganicus, Santa Tartaruga, Alolan Jojo, and Alexander Cato, and all the others who have joined our memberships. Thank you for your support. Please check out last week's episode in case you missed it. And thank you to you who are watching right now. If you watched all the way through this, what is it, like 20 minutes long, Jesus Christ, <laughs> then thank you ever so much. The longer you watch, the more YouTube likes us, basically. So yeah, give me a high five in the comments if you listen to me ramble all this way. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.